Welcome to Hood War Stories. In this episode, I'm discussing the Mid-City Stoners. The Mid-City Stoners, also known as MCS, is a Mexican-American gang located in Los Angeles and Long Beach, California. They were originally known as the Stoner Gang in the 1970s, before morphing into a violent street gang. They adopted the term Stone to signify their love of getting stoned on dope and to honor the band The Rolling Stones. They were founded in the Mid Wilshire area in central Los Angeles near Queen Anne Park by OG Demon, but later emerged on the east side of South Central. The Mid City Stoners in the city of Los Angeles consist of multiple cliques. The Crenshaw Boys clique of the Mid City Stoners are based around the Queen Anne Park. Their territory stretches from Olympic Boulevard and Pico near Crenshaw Boulevard. The Hobart Boulevard Locos, which were one of their most active cliques in the 80s, are located between Armour Avenue and Western, near 11th Street. They shared parts of their barrio with the Rolling 20 Bloods. During the 90s, a war exploded between the Mid-City Stoners and BPS and the Rolling 20 Bloods. These gangs all have territory in the same neighborhood, and many believe the war was racially motivated. During a four-year period, a grand total of 19 people died in the sporadic war eight of whom were black civilians killed by the Mid-City Stoners. Things came to a head when the Mid-City Stoners killed Insane Wayne in 1993. Insane Wayne was a big reputable for the Rolling 20 Bloods and was well loved in his community. Retaliation came within hours. Later that night, four MCS members were shot on the corner in a drive-by attack, one of whom was fatally wounded. Back and forth retaliation shootings resumed, with many civilians being caught in the crossfire. Let's fast forward to March of 1997. Teaspoon from the Rolling 20 Black Demon Soldiers was gunned down on the 1400 block of 2nd Avenue. Not long after, a Latino male was shot and killed on the 1000 block of Harvard Boulevard, which turned out to be a mistaken identity. About a week later, two Rolling 20 Bloods were shot on the South and Adams Boulevard when a Latino male walked up and opened fire. KD, who was a high-ranking Rolling 20 Blood, was killed in a double shooting. 1993 through 1997 was the peak of this war. After 1997, things cooled off for a minute. As the Mid-City Stoners were receiving additional pressure from the West Side Playboys next door, as well as from MS-13 Normandy locals clicked to the north, all while the Rolling 20 Bloods were pushing up on them from directly below, the Hobart locals click began to feel closed in on all sides. Combine that with gentrification. Present day, this clique does not have the same presence it did in the 90s. The Long Beach Mid-City Stoners are based on the east side, with the 19th Street Locos being their primary clique. The Mid-City Stoners have been in Long Beach since 1990. In Long Beach, they are virtually isolated and surrounded by rival gangs, such as the East Side Longos and Boreal Pobre. They consider all Black American gangs as enemies, especially the Rolling 20 Crips and the Insane Crips. The Long Beach Mid-City Stoners claim CK and have openly expressed their hatred for Crips and black people in Long Beach. In the mid to late 2000s, there was an ongoing war between Latino and black American gangs in Long Beach for control of territory to be used in drug trade. MCS members view all black Americans as threats, even if they are not gang members. On May 29, 2008, at approximately 7.40 p.m., Randolph rode his bicycle next to his two friends, De Bruce and Terry. Just before they reached Locust Avenue, a green Honda with two occupants turned into an alley in front of them, blocking their way. MCS member Luis, who was in the front passenger seat, produced a gun, then aimed it at the three men and fired five times in rapid succession. Terry was struck by a bullet in the right shoulder and Randolph was struck in the leg as he ran for some nearby stairs. De Bruce ran across the street and was able to escape injury. The Honda then drove off. Randolph identified Luis in a photo lineup and in court as being the shooter. Luis was arrested the next day for possession of marijuana. Two officers testified that they had prior contact with Luis and knew him to be a member of the Mid-City Stoner Gang. A detective interviewed Luis the evening of his arrest at around 6.45 p.m. Luis admitted that he was an MCS member and that his street name was Darkie. He said he had gone to the liquor store to buy some cigarettes where he met his fellow gang member Dopey who offered him a ride in his green Honda. He said when they saw two black males walking on the sidewalk, Dopey asked Luis if he knew them. When Luis said no, Dopey directed Luis to shoot. Approximately two months before the shooting, an officer had met Luis in the hospital where Luis was being treated for a gunshot wound to the head. The officer interviewed Luis, who told him that he had been shot by some black Americans. 
Speaking of his assailants, Louis said, I don't like the blacks. Fuck those peach and mayates. I will take care of them. I'ma cap those mayates. Mayate is a denigrating term that compares a race of people to a large black beetle, which is considered a pest in Mexico and South America. In Spanish slang, it refers to black Americans, almost equivalent to the N-word in English. Luis Sanchez from the Mid-City Stoners was convicted on three counts of attempted murder and three counts of assault with a firearm. He was sentenced to 15 years to life on May 30th, 2008 at around 11.45 p.m. Isaiah and his brother Darnell were standing on the corner of 19th Street and Long Beach Boulevard. They were waiting across the street when a Latino male approached on a bike. After asking Isaiah and Darnell where they were from, the man said, Fuck Nick! Fuck 20s! Fuck his ass! and pulled out a black revolver. The male then began shooting. Isaiah was hit in the shoulder and Darnell was struck in the back. An officer responding to the shooting spotted the Latino male riding down 20th Street. The male tried to hide behind a car, but was apprehended. When Luis was arrested, he was wearing a white t-shirt, dickies, and busted up tennis shoes. He also had MCS tatted on his back. He told police his hood name was Ryder. When the police searched his home, they found a box of 22 caliber bullets. He also tested positive for gunshot residue. Luis Bazin, from the Mid-City Stoners, was convicted on two counts of attempted murder and assault with a firearm. He was sentenced to 80 years of life. In the early 2010s, the Mid-City Stoners had a clique near the Nickerson Garden Housing Projects in Watts. The train line clique was located on 113th Street near Wadsworth. Most of their members lived in one house on this block, also known as the Stoner House. As many know, the Bounty Hunter Watts Bloods operate in and around the Nickerson Garden Housing Projects. They have a clique around 113th Street and Bellhaven, known as the Bellhaven Gang. The Stoners and the Bounty Hunters were rivals. Their members crossed out each other's graffiti and shot at each other. Dewan, also known as Thugger, survived such a shooting in which Eddie Bertho from the Stoners was implicated. The residents of the Stoner House also harassed young black Americans who walked past their home. This would be a daily occurrence. The stoners shouted racial epithets, displayed weapons, and threatened to turn their pit bulls loose on the young people. The stoners had done this on December 20th. The next day on December 21st, a group of about 15 black American students walked past the stoner home from Lock High School. As they walked past, the stoners verbally harassed the students. One of the stoners lifted a gun that was tucked in his waistband. Most of the students went home, but some were angry and wanted to fight. Jason, who was a part of this group, went to his friend Dupree's house and told him and E. Wayne what happened. On his own initiative, E. Wayne stole a bike that was lying in the street by the curb. He rode down the block to see if the stoners were still outside. E. Wayne returned to the others and said that the people were still in front of the house. E. Wayne, Dupree, Jason, and Shannon then walked over a block to Oscar's house and sat behind a car. Oscar was a friend from the neighborhood. Oscar's father peeped out the window and saw two of the boys loading bullets in a black gun. The four boys then made their way at the corner of 113th and Wadsworth. Shannon told Oscar not to continue on 113th Street so that nothing bad would happen to him. Oscar asked if they were gonna kill someone. Shannon responded that they were about to shoot a Mexican. Oscar turned off 113th Street and continued his journey. Jason stopped his bike at the corner of 113th and Wadsworth. Wally Wayne walked down 113th Street towards the Stoner House. When he was directly across from the house, E. Wayne fired four to five shots while standing on the sidewalk. E. Wayne then walked back towards Jason. They got onto the bike and rode away. Officers responded to the shooting, found Eddie Berto lying in the street dead with an obvious gunshot wound to the head. Officers recovered three nine millimeter cases directly across the street by a tree. A detective testified at trial that he estimated the distance to be about 75 feet the same detective agreed that it would take both luck and skill to shoot someone in the head from that distance. The four boys were later arrested in March of 2013. Multiple witnesses testified at trial, including Jason. E. Wayne Berry and Dupree Jackson from the Bounty Hunters were convicted of second degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. They were each sentenced to 40 years of life. The Trailline clique had aspirations of expanding in the Watts area, but they were shut down by the Bounty Hunters. After things reached a boiling point, they were ultimately forced to relocate, and the train line click is no longer.
I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.